So the first thing is just teaching him not to try and push on you to get the food. And um, if he does sort of sniff on me, I'll just turn my back towards him a little bit and I'll feed him out there away from the bag. Is that the case? As soon as he stopped pushing on you, then you clicked? Yeah, exactly. So if he's sort of sniffing and pushing and nuzzling, then when he moves away from me, I'm going to mark that moment yeah. and then feed him out there over there as well. When you feed him, you want to take your hand over the front of his nose like that rather than under his chin because if you sort of go under their chin sometimes they'll get a little bit more grabby yeah, okay. and you also want to maybe just even move your hand up towards him rather than sort of taking it down as he eats because they'll sort of try and grab onto it before it disappears yeah, yeah. so good boy so we have the clicker in our hand ready and then wait for him just to move his head away from the food And we stand on the side of him at first so that he knows um, which way to move away from you. And eventually we just want him to have his head like in the middle of his chest with his neck straight. Good boy. Very clever. <laughs> it's going to make a great trick horse. Really? <laughs> yeah. And you... <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of clicks and treats, especially at first when we're just teaching them those food man manners. So sniffing doesn't work, nudging doesn't work. I'll, I can, you know, step further away from him if I need to. Yeah, having your head over there, that's the answer. And it's still there, I'll click again. Yeah. So ideally I don't want him coming back, moving away, coming back, moving away. You just want him just to stay over there. So I'll try to get as many repetitions as I can in while he's there and he'll think, Hey, this is a good place to be. I'll just keep my nose here. <laughs> so some horses have to do this um, exercise for, you know, quite a few sessions. Other horses won't need it as much, depending on how food motivated they are and how sort of pushy they are about the food, just teaching them. Keep your nose away from the food. <laughs> and it's also teaching him that his behaviour can make me click and feed him. So he thinks he's you know, finally trained the human to feed him. <laughs> Just put your head there. <laughs> Very good. Perfect. Eventually I can sort of have the bag facing him a little bit more. See, that's a bit more tempting. Yeah. And then if I need to, I can turn away from him. That's it, neck over there. So they can get really carried away and, and have their head right round to the side, but we don't actually need it all the way around there. We just, <laughs> just need their neck straight. And so I won't click when he's all the way around there. I'll just wait till he's there, got his neck straight. Good boy. So there's no clicks when your nose comes over here. Lots of clicks when you hold your nose away from the food. And then we would repeat the same thing on the other side. Yep. <laughs> okay, so it's a whole new behavior on this side. So he'll probably like go around there and try to like that and try to reposition me. Yeah, because yeah. he, he doesn't necessarily know it's about moving away from me <laughs> until I do the same number of repetitions that I did on the other side. So do you wait till he's pretty good on one side before you swap sides? Yeah, yeah. And he was getting the idea. Like they learn so quickly with the clicker training. And the good thing is that you can always um, retrain a behavior. So, you know, you don't have to worry if you accidentally click at the wrong time. And um, 
if you think, oh, you're starting to do it wrong, you just, we call it shaping the behavior. So you just gradually change the standards yeah. of behavior that earn the reward. And very good. Yeah, yeah. Um, eventually we'll go in with him and, and stand next to him with the food and said, hooray, we can train the humans to feed me. I just mm -hmm. put my head straight. Yeah. So if you're standing directly in front of him, he doesn't need to like move his head right around the side. But if you are on one side of him or you're working in close here. So is he moving his head like that because he thinks or is he? <laughs> I'm not sure, but I could <laughs> even just give him a little scratch here. And um, I don't want to reward him over there because he can't see me. He can't see my what I might be asking him to do. Yeah. So when he's there, when his neck is straight, good boy. Perfect. You're very clever. And if I was to wait a little bit longer between the clicks, he'd probably come back and then go away again and come back and go away again. But we don't want to make that into a little pattern. <laughs> so we, he sort of does all that. We want him just to learn to stay there. So you can just gradually stretch out that time and try to click before he comes back. Good. And ideally we click before you get the food out yeah. because otherwise he'll start just watching for your hand to get the food out and he won't be, <laughs> won't be listening to the click so much. My timing wasn't perfect there, but. <laughs> Good boy. That doesn't work. That does. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And it's good if you get like a few different people to practice it with him so that he yeah. just learns whoever's got the food, you know, we don't push on them. We just stand with your neck straight and then the people will feed you <laughs> eventually. And, and he just learns that emotional control. So that time I changed something then, I patted him. And any time I change any little thing, sometimes that will make the behavior deteriorate yep. so even just you know patting him here it's like if I touch you can you still keep your neck straight away from the food you don't have to scratch me back that's it and eventually you can you know pat him all over and pick up his feet or whatever you need to do and just have him standing with his neck straight or someone climbs on his back or whatever yeah yeah to, I want to be doing this where he's uh, got no bridle on yeah, well, that'll be cool. <laughs> there. All right. So, right, change sides again. Whoops. So the horses are running around in the background. So you're really over the front of his nose like that yeah. when you're feeding. So he puts his head straight and when he hears that click, we don't want him to come over towards you to get the food. So even after he hears the click, we want to just make sure that his neck is straight. So I'm going to click when your neck is straight there. And so there he came over. I'll just wait for him to have his neck straight and then I'll feed him. Yeah. So neck straight click. Neck straight feed. Yeah. Neck straight click. Neck straight. I'll just wait for him to have his neck straight and feed. So I don't need to click again. I'm just teaching him that when he hears that click, he can go into that position with his neck straight and then the food will come. Good boy. Good, he thought about coming over that time and he said, now I'll just wait here and see if you bring the food to my mouth. And that's what we want him to 
to do is wait for the food to come to his mouth instead of hearing the click and then being a big crocodile. So ultimately, do you feed him a lot less? Yeah. Yeah. So then is it like bigger treats, like a bigger carrot? Or um, yeah, it depends on what you're asking them to do. If they lay down or something, you could use a jackpot. You could use a whole lot of something he really likes, whether it's carrots or um, pellets or grain or something. And good boy. I use licorice as a jackpot. Yeah. <laughs> My horses like that one. So we're just going to do neck straight click, neck straight feed. Neck straight click, neck straight feed. Good boy.